Hi guys, Bruce here. Well here we've got an old Toro and it's old because it's a Tecumseh and they went out of they, they went out of business in 2008 right and I sold this to a real nice lady two years ago and she never took the fuel out of it and uh, she brought it over to me yesterday and I did a quick pull out the brass plug out of the carburetor, cleaned the three holes, not the two, but the three holes in the brass jet and she got three stripes done on her lawn and it quit again. So by that time I think it had had enough time to suck gas from the tank into the carburetor and it quit. So I'm not going to muck around, I'm going to take the top off, this top, we're going to pull the carburetor and clean the, and inspect and clean the fuel in the tank. And uh, just a couple of other small notes on this. This is a 6.5 horsepower engine. And the new ones that they're selling, like the uh, Kohlers, they're 135 or 140 cc's. They're 6.5 foot gross pounds torque, something like that. So it's really misleading on the new ones that you, you think you're getting a 6.5 horsepower, but you're not. So this is a big old boy, and uh, I'm going to just uh, regroup here, and we'll start taking it apart, and see where we end up. I've got the uh, juice for the uh, ultrasonic cleaner cooking in the house. Mrs. P will notify me when it hits 70 degrees, and when I bring it out here and get it into the ultrasonic cleaner and get it all turned on, it, it will have lost 10 degrees, and it'll be at 60 degrees, which is what I use. Oh, was a lot of information in a short period of time. Talk to you in a bit. All right, let's get this guy up in the air so I can work on it. All right. Let's get this top off of here because it's just causing me problems. You know, it didn't burn oil in the two years she had it. Oh. Yeah, got all four bolts out of there. Yeah, baby. Now. I want to get the carburetor off and the tank. I think we can do that all at the same time. We're going to take the muffler off next. This is, for any of you that don't know, this is just classic Tecumseh stuff, right? Muffler! I'm going to line my parts up, although I don't have to, I know them well. Okay, carburetor, uh, 3 8 or cross, I'll use a 3 8 Phillips, I think. It's a good idea to use this, but you don't have to. It's just good to have it, right? Good. Oh my gosh, the gasket survived. Air filter off. Now, we are going to disconnect. Let's just. This is all happens at once now, eh? We might even take the, the tank off at the same time we do the carburetor. Yes, we probably could, eh? It's just the two levers now, the throttle and 
Governor. Here we are. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Now, up to the bench. Be with you in a bit. Hello there. Let's pour the gas out of this tank first. See how bad it is. Okay. There's a lot of crud bunnies in there. That almost looks like a moth. Is that possible? Hemostat, stop! No, it's just a chunk of bark or something. But there is a lot of dirt in there, as you can see. So now, pliers. Oh. I'm just going to give this a little tiny shot of air here. And then I'm going to take some clean gas. Or even I'll just take a little bit of the, the gas on top of here will be clean, right? There, that tank's been rinsed, and it looks good. It's got a screen. I don't know if you can see that. There it is up there. Oh. Yeah, right there. Done. Now, she just had this running and was using it, and it quit again on her, right? So we're going to take the bottom of that carburetor off there, half inch wrench, <clears throat> yep, perfect, my juice is cooked, we'll just take this off and see how much more, oh, no more stuff got in there, okay, let me go get my juice. Be right back, my friends. Turn off my flashlight. Okay, the juice was 72 degrees in the house. And it's a little low on the level, so we're going to get a little bit of... Uh, can I do that from here? Talking to myself. Yes, I've got water in the garage. We'll use some of that. Take it up to the full line, right? There we go. Turn around. Oh, plug it in. It's got to have electricity first, right? And we'll just let that settle down. Turn on the heater. That's all there is to that. We're just going to see now it's dropped to 59. We'll come back to that afterwards. Thanks, guys. Now we're going to take this thing apart. Where's my basket? Oh, I'm so dumb I put it inside. It's at 57 degrees, so it's lost 14 degrees just adding a little water and moving it to the outside world. Okay, let's get the... Uh, I don't want to take off the seal, but I guess I will. We don't have to cook the seal. Bowl seal, that is. Hmm. 
Stubborn guy, eh? I'm gonna have to get a better yank on it than that. There we go. Ha! These magnetize when you don't want them to. Okay, float. Oh, okay, needle. We'll cook that. We'll check the float. Ooh, gee, I don't know. Seems okay. Quarter inch. Now I promised myself that I'm not going to uh, clean this carburetor before I clean this carburetor. Can you see? Okay, you guys can see. Just add a little bit of light with my flashlight there. Now I need a 3 8 to undo these. down to a clean carburetor now but I am gonna I can't help myself you guys I have to squirt it with a bit of carb cleaner I got two empty cans of carb cleaning fluid that's good it'll hold me back from cleaning absolutely everything so it almost looks like it wasn't drinking right eh I'm gonna get a some kind of a clean ish rag here Got a bit of crud out of it. Now I don't want to contaminate my soup too much. So I'm just going to give it a quick spray. This is quick for me, you guys. Is there a... Oh, there is. Okay. Good lesson. On this carburetor we have the little uh, tiny idle jet. We might be able to get that out. It's right there. It's a little black cap. It's being stubborn. It's just old plastic, right? You don't even have to have this on here, but it just provides... It keeps people from going in there. Should we wash it? No, we don't. I will wash it. Now we need a nice screwdriver to get this jet out of here. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. Are you with me? My brother-in-law is staying here for three weeks. He's, uh, he'll probably come out and check to see how I'm doing. He just finished completely restoring two vehicles, not just, but he has done a 240Z Datsun right down to the chalk marks on the radiator. And now he's done a 900cc Suzuki four cylinder. So he's good with his hands too. Better than me. I'm just, I just fake it, right? Yeah, okay, again, let's just try a couple of shots from, from the inlet. Goes right into the right into the pump. Oh yeah, and it comes out of that hole too, right? That means that's a word of caution there, guys. I think we're just about there. A couple more shots, and I'm gonna just okay. I'm done. That's that's the least amount of cleaning you'll ever see on a Bruce. On a Brucia shop video. And I get most of the dirt off just so that the, uh, the unit doesn't become contaminated, right? 
good. The rest is not necessarily to be cleaned. I got quite a bit of dirt off there. Now, let's see how it's going to drain here. We want it to drain some out of most of the orifices. Where's that guy? I think that'll do. Let's cook them! Hi guys, way over there. Now we wait with anticipation. Alright, you gotta love the old Toros, eh? I mean, I'll just... Yes, the wheels are worn out and everything. But I just wanted to show you something. Look up underneath here, and everything is just beautiful. There's not, there, there isn't even enough work to worry about scraping this thing up. The blade could use a little love, but that's it. I'm going to take it out onto the, uh, the apron of the garage and uh, just air wash it a little bit. You don't have to see that. I'm just going to blow the crud off of it. I put a little rag into the intake manifold and a little rag into the exhaust manifold. I put the oil plug back in. These are good old mowers. Here's a little shot of the plug. I just cleaned it up. It's really good. I don't have a problem cleaning plugs if they're in good shape, as you know. I Gonna get this out of the juice. It's hot. All right. First, I'm gonna do is rinse everything in with water. That guy's got a hole in it. Now I'm at down. And then I just. Uh, Rinse everything with a little tiny bit of methanol. Methyl hydrate, alcohol, whatever you like. The needle. We will pressure test this guy with our Ken from Ken Small Engines pressure tester. Okay, a carbo right over. Oh, gasket came off, that's fine. Good. And then I'm going to save this old stuff because it's valuable. I don't know if it's worth as much as the rag I'm going to throw away. And there we go. I look in there, it is fairly clear. That's called recycling. Okay, now except for a little bit of pressure from the air, I'm gonna wash these parts off with air. Look at that bowl, you guys. Brand new. This is one of the culprits right here. Where's the carburetor? I gotta blow it out too. Hang on. Beauty. Float. Needle. Now Donny Boy 73 years ago used to say if you're gonna put this needle in, you put the point of the wire toward the air intake. Be right back. Don't run away. Okay. Now let's find out. Six pounds. Oops. I'll do that again because I have to change hands. Uh, release. Okay, it leaks at 9 and stops at 6. Okay. 
Is it still at six? Yes. It's good. Now we can finish building the rest of this carburetor. It's a beautiful seal. I must have used a real honest to gosh Tecumseh kit on this when I did it. Okay, let's just stop for a minute here. Okay, I got some parts to find. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a really good opportunity just to show you how the uh, linkage should go on a Tecumseh carburetor. Uh, they're similar. One has a different, the older models have a different rod from the governor arm to this spring here, but this throttle arm is always the same. And it goes to the top, I'll pull this off, it goes to the top of this governor arm right here. So we'll zoom in on that. And right there, that, this one, the one that goes on the throttle goes to the top hole in the governor arm and the one that has the spring on it, regardless of whether it's a manual throttle or an automatic throttle, goes to the lower hole. And uh, it goes to, whoa, whoa, it goes right there, it goes to the, uh, the uh, furthest hole on that side. There, it's a beautiful thing. So I just got to put the tank on, we'll put this back on, and uh, get some gas in it and we'll see what it does because I still want to change the oil and sharpen the blade. But you don't have to see that I don't think. Thank you. Alright, everything's back on. I just put some fuel in the tank. I have not changed the oil yet. I want to warm it up and we'll see if it starts with five or six plunges on the old primer bulb there. There's been enough time for the uh, gas to leak into the carburetor. Ah, well there's a problem. I think we need a new primer bulb. I think that's part of our problem. I don't like changing the original ones because they're so well made. Tells a little story, doesn't it? Bingo! So do I change that primer bulb? I'll show you what I got, what the problem is here. I saw a little bit of moisture right there, eh? And you can see there's a crack. A dirty bugger. So I'm going to put a new primer bulb on it. Be right back. Okay, I'm not going to make you watch two hours of this, but there's a little, there's a little uh, bracket like this that has tabs on it, and the primer bulb fits, that almost looks like the same one, doesn't it? Fits in like that, and the edges hold it in. You just have to get the old one out. Some guys grab onto it. I like to find the little notch on the edge, and dig in there. Right there. Okay, grab some pliers. Just yank the heck out of that thing. It's coming. It's not being friendly to me, but there is a there's a rip right here. Don't, don't fret. There it is. The whole thing. Ta -da! Now we just take a little bit of card cleaner and clean that hole out of there. Take a little air. Shoot it in there. Put the new one in. Now I usually use an 18 millimeter long socket for this. Here's an 18. It'll work. I should tap on there a little better. 
there's just a bit more room for the tabs to grab. And I'll put one of the tabs at 12 o'clock. Now I take a screwdriver. I almost need my glasses for this, eh? Go to 6 o'clock. 12 o'clock. 2 o'clock. 4 o'clock. 5 o'clock. And 4 o'clock. That should be it. It's holding good. Okay, let's see if it actually starts and, and I can make it sputter. I think you know what I mean. If, if you don't know what I mean, you'll know right away. So lower this down for safety. I learned that the hard way. That's low enough. I'll give her five or six good punches. Start her up. Put a clamp on the bar. No, 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 no! Alright, so now I'm using my oil extractor. Because of the self-propel, uh, there's a guard in the way of the, uh, of the engine drain. So I'm just using this. I tried using the bigger hose, the 3 8 hose, but it wouldn't go past this little fitting right here, I don't think. So I just put the quarter inch hose on and it's working great. And well, there's just a little bit left. Just to keep you informed, I get asked this quite a bit. Well, my friends, get a hat on here. The operation was a success. Uh, I did put a, a new air filter on there and uh, sharpened the blade, of course. You can see that right over there with that grinder. That was kind of rewarding. Uh, all started from dirty gas, but I did find a cracked primer bulb that was still pumping. But that's probably why she had to pump it ten times, not three. Thanks a lot.